What is pulse-filled ablation for atrial fibrillation? So pulse-filled ablation is the newest technology that's uh, come out here in 2024. Uh, so our traditional ways of getting rid of AFib cells from the inside is to either cauterize it or freeze it. Uh, there, there was a little device that could kind of do a laser, uh, but I don't think it it really had improvements over what we standard do with the cauterization of the freezing balloon in terms of ease of use and, and things like that. So the main modalities most people are doing is freezing or cauterization with the radial frequency catheter that heats the tip. And remember, it's not always so much how you do it or what energy source you use, it's what you do. I think people need to think about AFib as being like a big force fire. And the bigger the force fire is and the more walls these AFib sources or triggers have formed on, the more would need to be done if you want to try to turn the clock back to an earlier stage or all the way back to zero. It's not an all or nothing thing. It's not like, oh, I have a 90% force fire and if you just do that first wall and get rid of 10% of it or 15% of it, then I'm gonna get the same result as somebody else who just has a 10% force fire. It really isn't as simple as that. And so that's why it, that explains why some people need three procedures because maybe the person who's ablating them is just doing the same first wall over and over and over again and they're never going to be able to get a good result and all they do is just make it slightly better and then use a drug to suppress the rest other people can do more advanced ablations but some people may need three or four procedures to do that some people need one or two so just different scale levels as in any field now traditionally cauterization has had the disadvantage of well you're cauterizing and that you can do collateral damage. You can burn things you don't want to burn. Um, you can affect the esophagus, which is your food pipe, which runs right behind your heart if you're cauterizing on the back wall. And, and that could be very dangerous and cause severe complications. You could uh, make holes in the heart with dangerous bleeding. These are all known complications. The freezing balloon has a little bit less likelihood of those kinds of complications, but the, the biggest disadvantage I see with the freezing balloon is it's really only meant to reach that first wall and and really parts of that first wall so if you have anything more complex than that a bigger force fire it's really not meant to do that and and, and you still would have to do a cauterization catheter for the rest um, and oftentimes people break that up into two or three procedures and then you have to have multiple procedures as opposed to somebody doing it all with cauterization and maybe getting it in one procedure and there are some people, some doctors who, who have figured out ways to use the freezing balloon on a little bit more walls. So they can do some on the roof and some on the back wall. It's kind of off label, but they figured out ways to do it, but it's still very limited and not as versatile in reaching all the other walls as the cauterization catheter. But the cauterization catheter takes more skill, more experience to keep it still in one spot for 30 seconds or longer. It takes a lot more skill, not everybody can do that, um, but it is more versatile and there is a little bit more likelihood of complications or collateral damage. This newest technology, pulse-filled ab ablation, is potentially exciting because the energy source uses pulsed electrical uh, um, pulses of electricity to essentially kill the cells or denature the, the heart cells without actually destroying them the way a cauterization catheter would um, or even less damage to the to the architecture of the cells than freezing it. So it's it's almost like you know waving a, a wand and just killing off the cells just by touching them. And that's potentially exciting because if you could get it so that it could do some of these more complex lesion sets that some of us can do uh, to get these harder cases um, without the risk of collateral damage or making holes in the walls of the heart, then that would be the best of both worlds. And that's the potential. But right now, it's a completely brand new technology. It, it just came out in the US. Uh, there's still trials. And of course, with the first iteration of the catheter, it's really only right now designed to do that super easy first wall that most people do, which is the corners of the first walls where those veins, we call the pulmonary veins insert. And that's where AFib always starts there. And yes, if you're at a very early stage of AFib where that's all you have is on the first wall. And like I said, no matter what modality somebody uses, whether they cauterize, freeze, use a laser or do the pulse filled ablation, you're, you know, you're shooting for a high success rate, usually 80, 90%. Um, but if you have more than that, then just doing that isn't enough. So, and, and I think the, the current studies that just came out showed that the success rate, even for those early stage uh, cases of AFib using this newest technology was um, was in the 60 to 70 percent range. So and this is just for a very simple ablation for a very early stage AFib. 
Obviously, this is not for more complex cases, persistence, long-standing persistence. You, somebody could use them to get rid of that first wall, um, just like they might use a freezing balloon, but then they're gonna bring you back. Uh, and if they didn't get it all, which likelihood 40, 50%, chance they will, and 50% they didn't, they're going to have to bring you back, use the cauterization RF catheter to try to do the rest, if they even have the skill to do that. And so just know that it's not some magic bullet like, oh, I use this energy source and it's going to just get it because of the energy source. It's what you do, not so much the energy source. Like I said, when you talk, come out with new technologies, it always does one of two things. It either enables something to be done more advanced that nobody's able to do, but now allows them to do, or it enables those who are, are are struggling to to do some more advanced people can do brings up the standard for everybody by just making certain baseline things easier to do for everybody without very much skill um, and then that's where people will take that and say okay but i'm going to try doing more advanced things with it and push the envelope and see what can really be done and so it's not in any field everyone is not always doing the same thing it's you have to look to see what is being done and you know the freezing balloon was great to raise the standard of getting that first wall done, even without a lot of skill by everybody, uh, raise the baseline standard, but didn't mean that everybody could do more advanced ablations uh, for harder cases. This is still in the in the stage where it's just looking at doing that first wall for very easy cases and just trying to do it reliably and quicker, which that's great to do it quicker, but if you have a more advanced case, a persistent or long standing persistent, and you're still just getting 50 something percent success rate, and you, and you you know need to do more if you have the skill or you don't have the skill you won't do more but if you have the skill you're still gonna have to use the cauterization catheter so all it's still doing is you're not doing enough but it did make what you did do quicker which i suppose th there is some benefit to that if you take 20 more minutes less or something then that's 20 less minutes of anesthesia but in terms of actually getting the result of getting rid of the more porous AFib, you may not be getting that result if you're just not able to do a more advanced ablation. But this is where technology advances and people try using it. Some people try using it for the more advanced lesion sets and seeing what works and doesn't and giving feedback to the company so they can keep making improvements to their catheter so that one day maybe the catheter will be ready for prime time, so to speak, and be able to, for some of us who do more advanced ablations, be able to do that with it. It's not there yet, but it can be and of course the people who just don't do advanced ablations then they're never possibly going to do it and it won't really matter so you just have to see what's being done not necessarily always how it's being done